Well, good morning. Jay here. And uh, welcome to my new little hobby. And I just wanted to share with all of you, in the spirit of staying inspired in my channel and walking the talk and pursuing your passions and your dreams and not being afraid to try new things, I wanted to show you my progress on my little whittling thing. Uh, I should call it wood carving because a lot of the purists don't like the word whittling. They like to be called wood carvers because it is a true art form. And I gotta say right off the bat, I'm a beginner and I stink at it. <laughs> Not very good. Um, you can see a lot of the imperfections and stuff in the ones I'm doing and I would uh, if you're interested in this, I would check out on YouTube a guy named Doug Linker. Doug lives in Canada, I believe, and um, I don't know where, I think Ontario maybe, but he is an avid outdoorsman. I think the name of his channel is, well, I think he has two channels. One is Doug Outdoors, and it's camping videos and uh, bushcraft kind of things, and um, then he has uh, a wood carving channel and it's called Doug Linker, D-O-U-G-L-I-N-K-E-R. And watching him was really what inspired me to try it. It just looked like a lot of relaxation and fun. So um, I wanted to just show you my progress so far. It's been a couple of months since I started doing this. And uh, you know, like I said, I just happened to cross a video and um, it's, it's not a very expensive hobby at all. The little wood carving tools on Amazon are like, you can get, I think, a little pack uh, with a couple of knives in it for 20, 30 bucks. And uh, the blocks themselves, you can buy uh, a, a 10 or a dozen blocks of wood, different sizes, for about 10 bucks. You, you can find some of those at Hobby Lobby or Michael's um, but uh, or on Amazon too. But it, anyway, um, I wouldn't use the Hobby Lobby uh, carving tools. They're really not good for that. You're better off with a really sharp pocket knife, to be honest, if you're going to do that. Um, but uh, I've kind of gotten into trying a lot. You know, as you do a hobby and learn, as you go along, you learn what works for you. And uh, like any hobby, um, and I preach this all the time, you've got to not be afraid to stink at it at first. Um, now there are people that uh, are naturally um, able to pick up a hobby, music, things like that, and are immediately talented and good at it. Um, there are also people I know, folks I know, that if they aren't immediately good at something, then they don't want to pursue it. They don't want to do the hard work to do it, or they a little negative conversation in, in your mind goes off and it says, I'll never be any good at this. And you know, when you think about it, um, that's what a teacher's job is, really. Uh, a high school teacher or grade school teacher, probably more important in earlier years, is to make a child or a person believe that they can learn something, that they have the ability to understand a concept or something like that. Um, too many times when I was younger, um, the negative conversation in my head was, I'll never get this, I'll never understand it, I'll never be good at it, um, I won't be able to do this. So when you have those conversations, I can't, I won't, I never will, guess what? <laughs> you never will. <laughs> so, uh, watch for those conversations in your head. They kind of run like a little tape in the back of your mind. And uh, sometimes it's so automatic and you don't even realize it's do you're doing it and that it's there. So, um, but I wanted to show you what I've done here. Uh, so, I've done a bunch of Santa Clauses. There's a, there's a Santa. You can see, I hope there and here's another one that I did the Santa they're, they're very similar and they're very similar to this gnome 
It started with this gnome, and then you can make him into a Santa Claus. And um, then I just, uh, so I did some clever things here. I tried to, anyway, I, I decided that in the spirit of the Santa Claus, I could make a Christmas tree ornament. And originally I put it in like this, Christmas tree ornament. And then we did a two-sided thing. So it's Santa on both sides, right? And uh, let's see, which one is it? It's that one, yeah. And then my wife, and I gotta give her credit for this because she'll get mad if I don't <laughs> say it was her idea. Um, originally what, what she pointed out, and it really wasn't the idea that I came up with, but she inspired me to do what I, the next thing that I'll show you is, um, so this is a two-sided Santa, right? But if you turn him sideways, let's see if this is the right side. If you turn it sideways, like this, okay, kind of looks like the Grinch on the sideways. And I, so I got to thinking about that, and I decided to make a two-sided Christmas ornament with Santa on one side and the Grinch on the other. And that was, uh, she inspired me to kind of come up with that little idea. So that's fun, and we hang those on our Christmas tree. And then, of course, there's a, I've come up with a bunch of little guys. This is a little, little man character. I don't know if you can see. Uh, little coat, and his hands in his pocket, and his coat. And then this is uh, a little fat looking farmer guy or whatever. And uh, when I, I put it on Facebook and, and just asked for it, like a, did a naming contest, and they came up with the name Gustav. I, I mean, there was many names, but the, uh, there was two that said they wanted to the name him Gustav. So I just kind of named him Gustav. I don't know if you can see everything, if it's focusing or not on everything. I think it is. Right there. And, and the back side is, you know, kind of, I try to be anatomically correct. Here's a tall, skinny fella old fella with his uh, work work uh, bivalls on hands in his pocket and gray hair now about wood carving some of the frustrating things that they don't show you in a lot of videos or tell you about I mean they mention it sometimes but until you really experience it you don't really understand it but the wood has a grain and with the knives that are very sharp um, you have to make some really delicate cuts and uh, and shave in certain directions and you have to make deep cuts and and V cuts and straight cuts and uh, scoops scoop cuts and things like that that you have to do and and if you like when you're shaving it down like so if you're going the wrong way on the grain it comes off in chips and leaves these scarred like like you split the wood kind of look on it and what you're looking for is a smooth cut and so, so a lot of times you'll be doing that and you realize that's not the way to cut on it with that grain so you might have to turn it over and and cut that way or you might have to cut towards yourself with a peeling type cut to get the the smooth cut that you want and it takes a while to figure it out I mean to do it a bunch and also the really hard part for me is the eyes and the small little grooves that you have to make around your eyes. And uh, if you slip or don't get that just right, the whole eyeball comes out. <laughs> and that's happened a bunch of times on me. Um, also, if you're cutting areas like on a face under the chin or under the nose and trying to work around the nose and you m miss, you cut the nose right off. <laughs> And that's a, what we, we, uh, we call a catastrophic fail because it's really hard to bounce back from that. And at that point on, everything's just practice. So on that piece, I mean, it's not going to be a good piece. So, um, and you know, it gets frustrating because you might have spent hours on getting all, all these other thing, things just right, the body shape, the, uh, the head shape and everything. You got it all ready, worked out and then, 
it ruins the whole thing. Uh, and you have to get creative and try to work around it and redo it and uh, figure out a way to make it look, salvage it somehow if you can. Uh, a lot of times you can't and just throw it in the trash. And I'm sure I'm not the only guy that's ever experienced that in wood carving, but you know, until somebody tells you that, I mean, what, what you see on YouTube a lot of times is everybody's best foot forward. But um, I just want to, you know, inspire people to try stuff if you're afraid to try it. And if you don't get it right off the bat, don't, don't, don't give up all the time. Um, especially if it's something you enjoy. If you don't enjoy it and it's a, it's a, it's a uh, chore to get through it or um, it seems obligatory or not fun in any way, don't do it. <laughs> it's a waste of time at that point. But if you do enjoy it, which I do, there's, there's good things about this. It gets me away from television, for one. I don't watch the news or any of the stuff that's going on. Um, I, it's cold and winter outside. I'd, uh, I'd like to do it outside because the wood shavings go everywhere. I and mean, this is our dining room table, and I get wood shavings all over the place, and I'm constantly cleaning it up. Um, after about an hour of whittling, I'll stop and I'll collect all the wood shavings off the table and sweep up around the floor and vacuum and then keep working on it until I get another batch of wood shavings and clean it up as we go. And then I, I take my board and all my stuff and pack it away uh, for the day. Right now I've been painting. I just finished this little, um, I'm going to call him a wizard. He looks like the gnome and the Santa Claus. but. Um, I'm making him a, an alchemist because he's got a gold hat. I just painted his hat gold. I don't know if you can see that. And I haven't finished uh, painting him, so it's just in the raw carving there. I don't know if you can see all the features. I'm hoping you can. Um, anyway, so we're doing that this morning, and that's why I have all these paints in my workstation now. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. Uh, um, and whatever hobby you get, if it's learning how to play guitar or an instrument or ukulele, I don't know what, or uh, a nickel harper, <laughs> whatever instrument you want to learn how to play, or whatever art thing you want to do, whatever hobby, hiking, whatever it is you want to try, as long as you're physically able to do it, I would say go for it. I mean, don't let anything hold you back. Um, don't be afraid to stink because um, I, God knows I, there's nothing that came to, comes to me just naturally out of, off the bat. I've had to work at everything in my life that I wanted to learn how to do. So um, stay inspired, stay positive, and uh, God bless you all.